Wait, wait, wait. As you know, before we play it, we're gonna go through the preparation together. Welcome back to the Painting Food channel. It's me, Nicolau. If you are new here, we have a variety of videos all around food. Food vlogs, recipes and plating techniques. So please, consider subscribing. And if you do, make sure you hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we post a video. And please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. We're gonna start with the ragu. So we're gonna need some carrots, celery, onion, all finely diced. Place them in a pot with a generous amount of olive oil. And then we're gonna sweat them down, as you can see on this dramatically slow motion video. Then we're gonna start cooking our mincemeat. We're gonna put a bit of the time in the pot so the temperature doesn't drop and we start boiling it. After we cook the first third of the mincemeat, we put the second one and we continue. When all our meat is cooked, we're gonna glaze it with a good amount of red wine. Time for the tomato. Mix it. A bit of tomato puree as well. More chopped tomatoes and then cook it for four to six hours. This is the image at four hours. And this is six hours. Look how beautiful it looks. Then we're gonna freeze our ragu into half spheres. After they've been frozen, we take them out and we put a little bit more of ragu to be used as a glue so we can close our half spheres and make a full sphere. Scrape the rough edges of our spheres with a spoon. For the glazing we're gonna be using red wine and 1% of gel and gum. That means if we use 100 ml of red wine, we're gonna put one gram of gel and gum. Then we're gonna dip our frozen spheres into the hot mixture. The more you dip, the thicker will be the gel around the spheres. And once you dip it, it's important that you turn around the spheres so the gel sets evenly. Time for our crispy pasta. So we're gonna need one egg, 100 grams of flour and one tablespoon of parsley puree. Mix the parsley puree with the egg, make a hole in your flour and start mixing everything together. If you feel the pasta is too wet, you just add a bit of flour at a time and now you work your pasta. Let your pasta rest for at least an hour at room temperature. 
Now we go for beetroot pasta. Same procedure, but this time I'm using a little bit more of liquid, of beetroot juice, so I will put 10 grams more of flour. But again, if you feel it is too dry, you add some flour. By the way guys, let me know in the comments if you like me commentating through the preparation. When the pasta springs back, that means it's ready. Now it's time to roll the pasta. First pass the pasta through the machine at the thickest setting around three to four times then we're gonna start decreasing the thickness of the setting until we achieve the thickness that we are looking for which is number one on my machine like the thinnest possible Wait, wait, what's that? Is this a sign? Who is this? I can't believe. Wolverine. No, 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 no. Is it Wolverine? Wait, it's Trump. Oh my god. Parmesan crisps. Grate the parmesan onto a silicone mat. Bake at 160 degrees until crispy, around 10 to 12 minutes. 